Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about 498 diagonal traverse. So it says given a matrix of m times n elements, m rows, n columns, return all elements of the matrix in diagonal order as shown in the image in the below image. So I actually put this into this whiteboard so it could be better visualized. So I put the i index here and then the J index here. So from this, what you should realize is that um, each element on the same line has the same I plus J value. So let's take this line for example. So four has a I plus J of one, and then two also has an I plus J of one. And if you take this line for example, eight has the I plus J of three, while 6 has the i plus j of 3 as well. So this is actually the pattern that we're going to use to identify um, the elements that are on the same line. And you can realize here that when i plus j is odd, then the diagonal is going down. So here, i for 1, i plus j is at 0, which is even, and it's going up. When we're here on this line, the i plus j is 1, so it's going down. And this is even, so it's going up. And this is odd, so it's going down. So when i plus j is odd, the diagonal reverses. And another thing to notice in this question is that the j index, this is actually a very important part because it wants you to go by order, So which means you can't just go 1, 4, 2. So the j index actually organizes the order. Say when the uh, when the diagonal is going down, the smaller j index gets put first in the interarray that we're going to have. When the array is going up, the bigger j index is going to um, go last. So basically, there's a pattern here. And the solution here is what I wrote here. So you, you want to use a 2D array to store each element along with the column index and the i plus j index with the element, element value. Then you can use a comparator to sort this 2D array. And then once it's sorted, you just uh, traverse the 2D array and take the element values and plug it in to the int array. So that's how we're going to um, approach this problem. And um, I hope it makes sense to you guys. So let's get code in here. All right, so right here. First things first, what you always want to do with these matrix problems is that if matrix.length is equal equal to zero, you want to return. Turn a new int array with nothing in it. Okay, so now we can get to the coding part. So here, what you want to do first is um, call your um, 2D array. I'll just call it 2D right now. Actually, I'll give it a better name. I'll call it array. Okay, so I'll make it equal to new int matrix length times matrix zero dot length. And this is because we wanted to hold every single value in the 2D array matrix. And then we make it three because uh, as stated here, we need to we need to store the i plus j index. We can just store the column index and we need to store the element value. So it's actually going to be a width of three. And then for our int array, we'll call it res and it's equal to new int uh, rd.length. Okay, so now that we have this, we can start traversing through this array. So for int i equals zero, i is less than matrix dot length i plus plus four. And j is equal to zero. J is less than the matrix. We can just say uh, at zero, but if you want to say at i, it's fine because it's stated here that it's an m times n, so the width will not change. And then to j plus plus. Okay, so for here, I'm gonna call a index variable to tell us the um, index of our 2D array here. So I'm going to go ard at index 
plus plus. So what I did here is that because the plus plus is after the index, it's going to call this index and then it's going to add one to the value. So I don't have to put a index plus plus here. All right, so that's what it does. But basically, same thing. All right, so it's equal to new int array index. Uh, sorry, I'm making an int array here. Uh, so you want i plus j value, and then you want the j value, and then you also want the, um, the element value. So matrix i and at j. All right, so now that you've stored this in, you can go out of this loop. And here's the complex part of this problem. So once you have all the information that you need in there, you need to sort the array. And luckily in Java, there's actually a very easy function using comparator to sort this 2D matrix. So what we do here is we call arrays.sort, and then you put the array you want to sort the name in here. So ARRD, ARRD, and then comma, new comparator. If you're new, you might be new to this, but um, it's a pretty interesting function and you should check it out. So you have the comparator in here. I'm just going to put a semicolon here just in case I forget. So inside here, uh, make sure the this parameter is an int array. And so you have public int compare. And um, inside this, you want an array a and then a, array B for a compared com for comparing reasons. And then here you can say if A at zero, which is talking about this I plus J index, if A at zero is not equal to um, A at uh, B at zero, sorry. So what this what this statement does is that um, let me finish this first. So you do A minus A at zero minus B minus zero at zero. So right here Remember how we how um, the same i plus j value is on the same line. So therefore, if it's not the same, it'll sort the i plus j value. So this will actually go in um, ascending order, and then we can just get it. So that's w the first part. However, if you remember me saying here that when i plus j is odd, the diagonal reverses. So what this basically means is the J index, instead of organizing the J index um, from the smallest to biggest, we're going to organize it from the biggest to smallest. So what we're going to do here, whoopsies. Okay, so what we're going to do here is that if A at 0 mod 2 does not equal to, whoops, my bad, does not equal to 1, sorry, 0, and then what we're going to do here is return the opposite of a at 1 minus b at 1. And remember that a at 1 is the j index. And then else, we're just going to return the same thing, but without the negative in front of it. So this flips the value of this, which is why um, we do it. So now that the sort is finished, the rest of the process is fairly easy. Now all you need to do is um, traverse through this 2D array and get your value. So int i is equal to 0, i is less than r.length. And remember here, why there's a, so here I'm only going to use one for loop. And the reason is because these three values, this is for this part. So the only value we actually need in here is this matrix value, which is at the second position. So we only need to traverse through the rows of the array and get the second position of each row. So what I'm going to do here is res at i is equal to rd at i and at 2. So this calls this value, which stores into res. And then all that you need to do next is just to return res, and then you'll be done with the problem. So let's check if we got the test cases right, and it looks like we have it right. Um, just, just check our one more test case. Make it a square and see how it does.
Alright, this looks good. Let's turn it in. And looks like we passed. So, that's how you do this problem. So, the time complexity here, this sort is n log n, and this is n squared, so we'll just take an O n squared. So, this is actually an O of n squared uh, algorithm, and that's how you solve diagonal traverse. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, me solving this problem. Uh, if you want to see more of these problems, check out my channel page, and don't forget to like and subscribe.